Hey guys, Leanne here on Grady's Mom. I am starting a new what's for dinner this week. I actually started this video on the 4th of July. So we had my family over, my sister, my brother, my in-laws. So we all got together and my mom made potato salad. As you saw, we had burgers and dogs. I made a big thing of pasta salad and I also made some of this cab white caviar. I do have cooking videos for both this salad and the pasta salad, which I'll link down below. And then I just had a big plate of like lettuce, tomato, onion, pickles for the burgers. So I'm just getting ready in this clip to set up. And then we all actually ate outside. We have a table on the deck and we also set up a couple other tables. My family and my in-laws did not want to be filmed. So I always respect that, but we all ate together. The next clip here, my husband did some work for a family that owns a hibachi restaurant. And since the hibachi part of the restaurant is not open yet due to social distancing laws, um, like family style dining isn't you know, open here. Uh, they sent him home with some hibachi dinner for us from the job he did for them. So like hibachi chicken and shrimp and veggies and noodles and rice. And it was just really nice, a really nice treat for him to come home with that unexpectedly. The next clip here, I am actually getting some boneless, skinless chicken breast. It's about a pound and a half. I just cut it all up into small strips and took all the fat off. I added some extra virgin olive oil and I'm adding this McCormick dry fajita mix. And I'm doing this the night before. I'm trying something different with my sheet pan chicken fajitas. So I did like the way this came out. So I put the dry mix on with a little bit of the oil and then I just used a fork to kind of work the dry mix into the oil and the chicken so it would coat it really well since this was going to sit in the refrigerator all night. When I've done sheet pan chicken fajitas previously, I just put the dry mix on right before I popped the chicken in the oven, but this was just the night before and I did notice a difference. I noticed like just a stronger fajita flavor. So I think moving forward, I'll continue to do it like this. So this is the next day, of course, with the chicken, the peppers, the onions that had just come out of the oven. And as you can see, the chicken is well coated with that seasoning. I just made some yellow rice and then I served the chicken and the fajita veggies right on top. My husband had some sour cream on his and this is just a really quick, easy dinner to make. This next night here, I was just prepping a um, prepping some purple potatoes. I always like vegetables that are just different colors than the norm. And these purple potatoes, as you can see here, I got them at a local farmer's market. And again, I'm always just drawn to vegetables that are just a little bit different from the norm. So I'm just peeling the purple, purple potato. The skin just didn't look that great. Um, otherwise, I would have kept it on. But I'm just peeling this and getting ready to roast them. I am also going to get some meatloaf ready. I was going to do meatloaf muffins, but I decided just to do a regular loaf of meatloaf. So I've got a pound and a half of lean ground beef, some panko breadcrumbs, some sweet baby Ray's sweet and spicy barbecue sauce. I also mix some parm cheese and egg and some red onion. Then I just put the meat mixture into like a loaf pan and I brushed a little bit of extra sweet baby Ray's right on top. I just always like to brush the meatloaf with like ketchup or barbecue sauce or something. I know not everybody does it this way, but I just like that little kind of glazy sort of crust that it forms on top. And I also think it helps to keep the meatloaf a little bit more moist. I do this as well sometimes with turkey or chicken and do like turkey or chicken meatloaf. So I just put it on top and popped it in the oven. And I have my potatoes here with some red onion. I just drizzled a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, some Himalayan pink sea salt, and some garlic powder. And I think I also put a little bit of black pepper. And I just roasted the potatoes right along with the meatloaf. Very similar cooking times. I had just a tiny little bit of these green giant veggie tots left. Literally, that's all I had. So I decided just to use them up and make myself them on the side. And my husband, I had these just tiny little bit of this coconut shrimp. I think it is the CPAC brand coconut shrimp. So it worked out perfect. I was able to use two little things up in the freezer.
This next clip, I did the Olive Garden copycat Zuppa Toscana soup. I do have a video on that, which I'll link down below. So I cooked everything away in the crock pot, and then the last half hour, I added the heavy cream and the washed kale, and I just put it all into the crock pot, put the lid on and everything, just kind of cooks down to nothing within 30 minutes, and the cream incorporates, the kale kind of wilts down, but still has a nice crunch. It's definitely one of my favorite soups of all time to make and to also eat when I go out. So again, I'll link that recipe down below in the description box. And then this next clip here, we were actually having some friends over, some close friends of ours and their kids. So I'm here prepping to make skewers. This is the day of, just a couple hours before they came over. So I soaked my wooden skewers. I lined a large sheet pan and then I just went ahead and assembled the skewers. These rubber gloves here were actually more of a nuisance. I mean, obviously... I'm wearing the gloves to protect my hands and be sanitary because I'm kind of dipping my hands in all different things, but they actually made it trickier to skewer the veggies and the meat. I don't know how to explain it, but anyways, here I am just assembling all the skewers you're going to see in a moment. I did a whole bunch because I believe there were seven of us. Um, and I wanted to make sure there was just plenty of food an abundance of food. And of course, anything left over you know, we can have for lunch the next day because skewers are always delicious the next day as well. But I just wanted to chat briefly here while I was skewering these and you're watching along with me while I'm editing. I'm actually editing pretty late at night. It's about 1045 at night. Everything's going fine here. We are staying safe and busy with work and our jobs. And I'm trying to do as much as I can YouTube. I've been trying to put out two videos a week. It's hard sometimes, but I kind of just have, have to find pockets of time to do it. But here in New York, as far as the pandemic goes, knock on wood, currently we're at a really good place with keeping the spread under control. Um, really good with people being, you know, careful wearing masks, wearing gloves, social distancing, you know, not going out if they don't absolutely have to, keeping gatherings really small. Um, so hopefully that just continues and we continue to be in an upward trend in a good way. We're going to find Find out here in a couple weeks if the schools are going to reopen like normal in September. Normally the kids here go back after Labor Day, so we're all hoping and waiting to see what's going to happen there so everybody kind of knows where to go, you know, once the summer is over. So here is that huge tray of skewers. I told you guys I was making a whole bunch of them, and there was actually, I think, three left over after dinner. We were all really, really hungry. And here is kind of what they look like, just a quick clip of when they came out. I also made a little, um, a big bowl of pasta salad. I don't know if I filmed a clip, yes. I have a little bowl here of pasta salad. Um, again, with the skewers, it was just a really nice combo. And I'm getting towards the end of this video now. I've got my mom's Sunday sauce. This is just from a couple days ago, um, or actually, no, I'm Yesterday, my mom made this big pot of turkey meatballs and she threw in some pork ribs, like pork, um, like pieces of pork rib, as you can see the little bones there. It gives the sauce a really nice flavor. So we had a Sunday sauce yesterday and a salad. She grew a lot of this stuff in her garden. She's just starting to get some more tomatoes. And here is the penne with the turkey meatball, the sauce, some cheese, and some nice crusty Italian bread. It was a really nice dinner. My mom pretty much does like a Sunday sauce every single Sunday. Whether we're there or not, she just always does that because that's what her parents did. And then I'm ending the video with tonight's dinner that we had just a handful of hours ago. Some simple beef burgers, cheeseburgers, because I forgot to take anything else out and burgers are always an easy thing to throw onto the grill. And just some lettuce, tomato, and onion on mine. My husband does not like onion, so he just has lettuce, tomato, ketchup, cheese. The rolls, I think, are the artisano Sara Lee rolls. And then we also grilled up some cheese, cheddar cheese pierogies. We literally throw them right on the grill. So that is what we had tonight for dinner. It was simple. It was easy. And I didn't have to really turn the oven on at all. 
Thank you so much for watching this week's What's for Dinner video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll be sure to link all the recipes that I showed and mentioned in the description box down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. Thank you.